welcome to a new segment of Mount Slater Garage. We're at the beginning of the 2022-2023 snowmobile season. Hay Days is just a week away, and, and at Hay Days, Articat's going to release their newest chassis design, which we hope in the Mountain Slater segment that that's going to carry over to a new chassis for the Mountain Slater. And so we're pretty excited about that. Going to Hay Days this week, so you'll probably see a lot of videos and a lot of reels and pictures from Hay Days next week. Um, so kind of in uh, celebration of this new Articat coming out, we got our last three models of Articat sitting here. What we're going to do today is we're going to talk about the clutches, the primary clutches off the models that have come pretty much since the M-Series was released in 2005. And kind of the big thing about this is since the Articat's had such a problem with their primary clutches in the last couple of years, ever since the uh, team clutch with the movable bearing has come out. I've seen a lot on social media about that clutch cracking and coming apart and causing a lot of problems, which clutches is a big wear part on a high performance snowmobile like these are. So you're going to have, all models have clutch failures here and there, but it seems like it's been an inordinate amount with Articat. So we're going to talk about the primary clutches starting with the M series, then coming back through to the Ascender series with the, and then also this new clutch that Articat came out with on the 2022 sleds. Um, we're going to kind of show you the differences between all these uh, clutches that have been over the last almost 20 years of snowmobiles with um, these models of sleds and where Articat's going in the future with this new clutch. So we're going to go, we're going to take the clutch off each one of these, we're going to compare and we're going to weigh them, we're going to kind of show you where the differences are, where things kind of evolved from, from the first clutch on the M series to where we are today with uh, this new clutch that Articat released last year. So follow along as we go through these clutches and uh, hope this is interesting and helpful for you to understand where, where Articat's been. And if you have one of these older sleds, if you want to update one of them, decide which clutch you may want to use. If you want to use the clutch that came on it, maybe update it to a newer model clutch. Um, hopefully this gives you some information that you can go ahead and do that. So follow along as we go through these clutches. Now we're going to talk first about the M series. Now remember the M series went from 2005 through 2011, included the M5, the M6, the M7, the M8, and the M1000. There was those sleds. Um, they were really good sleds. You know, I've had this one for a long time. I don't know if I'll ever get rid of it. It's probably not worth selling. It runs so good. Never had a single problem with it. It's a 2009, so it's 13-ish uh, years old. It's got 3,000 miles on it. Um, just been a great sled. But this, So the M-Series sled was the first year for this clutch. A bit different than the clutch that it replaced, like on Articat Mountain Cat 900, the King Cat 900. And we're going to go over on the bench. We're going to show you the differences on this the differences on the other clutches. But this clutch also carried through in the early Pro Climbs. It came on the 2012, 13, 14, and 15 Pro Climbs. So Articat pretty much used this clutch from about 2005 through 2015, so 10 years. So there's a lot of history on this clutch. There's a lot of parts out there for it. It was actually a pretty decent clutch. Didn't have a lot of problems with it, but they had some inherent things that I didn't like about it. One of those was the big thing was how you change your clutch weights on this. But uh, not a bad clutch, and it serviced uh, Articat folks for a very long time. So let's go over the other machines. We'll show you the clutches that came following this clutch, and uh, then we'll show you all the clutches together and the differences. Now, when the Pro Climb came out in 2012, everyone had really high hopes because everyone had loved the M Series so much. They were just like, oh, Articat's going to hit it out of the park with their net sled. Unfortunately, that didn't really happen with the 12 and 13 Pro Climbs. It, really wasn't maybe until 16 when they really started getting the pro climb right. The 12 had a lot of problems, especially with blowing belts. That was one of its biggest problems. Now, one of the things that they changed on the clutching right off the bat that you'll see when you take one of these apart is they went from the M-Series uh, clutch bolt, which is a 12.13 millimeter bolt, to a Torx bolt with a Torx 60 socket to get this off. And some of the other things they changed on this clutch on the Pro Climbs, the 2012, 13, 14, and 15 came with the same style clutch that you found on the M-Series sleds. In 2016, Articat went to the Team Clutch. The Team Clutch was fairly similar, you know, it had a little bit more open cover. The main difference you see on this, there's two big differences. One was the Spider is steel on this. Um, they came up with, the on the steel Spider, a wider roller, and then they attached the weight, the fly weight differently than on the previous Articat clutch that came on the M-Series in the 12 to 15 Pro Climb. So we're going to go over those differences when we put this one on the bench. So let's go over to the Ascender and we'll show you how what happened with the Ascender Series. Okay, come over to our Ascender Series. You know, the Ascender started, it was a late release uh, in 2017. The 2017 Mountain Cat 
had a lot of changes on it. It was a phenomenal sled. It was a phenomenal upgrade from the 16. The 16 and the 17 Mountain Cat had the same clutch, but when Outer Cat did a late release, it was a gray one. Uh, they called it the 18 early release uh, Ascender. Pretty big upgrade. One of the big upgrades that happened on this clutch was this clutch had the roller bearing here where the belt rests on the clutch, and that allowed it to have a non-adjustable and auto-adjusting belt deflection, which is a big upgrade, and that was the main upgrade on this clutch. The rest of the clutch is um, essentially the same, uses the same weights, the same spring as the 16 and 17 clutch, but that roller bearing really kind of changed the game with this. But this is the clutch that came on the 19 Alpha, the 20, 21, and some of the 22 sleds. This is a clutch that we're having all the problems with, with cracking of the sheaves and cracking a couple other places, but the sheaves is the main place that we're seeing cracking on this clutch. I mean, so much so, you've probably seen the, the pictures and stuff on social media, these clutches coming apart. And when this thing comes apart, you know, this is a heavy chunk of metal spinning at six, seven, eight thousand RPM. When this comes apart, it sends shrapnel everywhere. It, it can destroy a lot of things from taking out your secondary clutch, blowing your belly pan apart, blowing this apart, and actually when this comes apart, it can actually damage your crankshaft and damage your engine, let alone if one of these pieces flies out and hits you as a rider. It can be, it can cause some severe damage. So when this thing comes apart, like it has multiple times, some people are saying replace this clutch before 1,500 miles. People are getting longer than that, but I don't know. I've replaced mine at 1,500 and I had one little teeny crack on my Alpha. And so I was probably pretty glad that I did. So the best thing to do is if you have this clutch, keep an eye on it, inspect it after every ride to see if you're forming any cracks. Mostly people are getting cracks here on the, uh, the movable sheath face but you can crack other places, so keep an eye on it real close. Now we got all of our clutches off and lined up, so we have this one, our first one, this is the M-Series clutch uh, that also continued on until the 2015 uh, Pro Climb when it was replaced in 2016 with the Team clutch, and then in, again in 2018 that was replaced with the movable bearing Team clutch, and then the newest Articat clutch is the Adapt clutch that came on some of the 2022 models and is going to come on probably most or on, if not all of the 2023 models. So let's start with the uh, Articat clutch that came on the M series and the Pro Climb, the early series Pro Climbs. The main thing that was changed on this clutch was we had a lot of wear issues on what we the flyweight and the pivot bolt that holds the flyweight on, which is goes through across right here. And this is what activates your and pushes on your spider to open and close your clutch. So the main thing that Articat did when they designed this clutch was they fixed the clutch weight to the shaft and instead of the clutch weight pivoting on the shaft, the clutch weight was fixed to the shaft and what happened was the clutch weight and the shaft pivoted and there was bushings in the clutch and, and instead of the weight. So if you wanna see that, we'll show you that. So if you can see this, there's a bushing inside of this clutch weight right here. And that's how the pre-2005 uh, were. And when you had this weight go through here like this, this would pivot on here. What happened, this flyweight bushing would wear out. And then this, this would wobble on here and it would cause undue wear. You'd get poor performance of your clutch. And so that was pretty, a pretty high wear item. So what Articat did was they went to this setup where there was a little Allen bolt and that you screwed that in against your pivot bolt and there was a little hole in your pivot bolt you'd screw that into and then instead of this pivoting on here like this the whole thing would pivot the bolt the pivot bolt and the flyweight so this is this is one of the bushings that would come in the old style weights instead of this bushing being in the flyweight right here they had was bushings out here so as the flyweight would pivot it would pivot inside the clutch here and that pretty much eliminated all the wear in here the premature wear that we were getting with the previous clutch and that was the big change on this M series clutch it was a pretty good clutch and it lasted pretty well. Had some problems with the aluminum spider breaking. So that's one of the big reasons when this clutch was replaced in 2016 with this clutch, we went with this, which was the steel spider. One of the other big things that came with this clutch was these rollers were quite a bit wider than the rollers on this clutch. If you can compare how wide that is there, this roller is probably 30, this roller here is probably 30% wider than that roller. So that added another layer of uh, wear resistance, having the wider roller and plus the steel spider on the 16 clutch. The other thing they did on the 16, they went away from this Allen headed way to attach the flyweight. 
which really was, if you were ever changing your weights, that was a real pain in the ass to get that out. Um, it was put in there with um, red Loctite, and you had to heat it up pretty good with the torch. And that's such a small Allen head that those commonly broke or broke your wrench or you stripped the threads. It was really just a pain in the ass to uh, get that flyweight out if you're changing out your weights. So in the 16 and the following year team clutch, the 16 through 22 uh, team clutch, they really didn't change any of their weights. The weights are pretty much the same. It's a wide weight. You went, they went back to having the bushing in the weight, but as you can see, the weight bushing is quite a bit wider, and that really eliminated the wear in the weight is to have that much wider um, weight with the bushing in the weight. So, so this is a bikeman weight for a clutch like this. And so what happens, you have this pivot, and you have a, a bushing that goes all the way through there, and you can see that this bushing, this is one of the old style bushings, it's probably almost 80% wider than the old style bushing, the bushing that goes through on this one. And so when this pivot's on here, it really, the wear factor, they really increase the wear factor on this style of weight with the new team clutch. So the big upgrade for this clutch was, went back to being easier to adjust the weights by being doing like this and be able to just take the pivot out, take, the, take it out and not have this silly lock nut on here like they did on that style clutch. The wider roller really helped wear as far as the spider wearing the steel, they kept with the steel spider and uh, really a great clutch. I don't really ever remember having any problems with this clutch on the 16s and 17s. Uh, and that brings us to the clutch that came out on the 2018 and 19 Alpha and the newer ones is this clutch. And these two clutches are essentially identical other than the roller bearing they put here. And you can see that that spins. That was their a way to eliminate having to adjust your belt deflection and keeping your belt tight. Now they'd have this technology on side-by-sides and ATVs for a number of years before, but it just barely made it to the snowmobile world. Articat was the first one to do this on the snowmobile in 2018. Polaris followed just barely last year with the P22 clutch on the boost sleds. They also put a roller bearing on to have a non-adjustable delt belt deflection, but Articat was the first one to do that and on a snowmobile in 2018. So these two clutches essentially identical other than that roller bearing and other than this, it seems to be the one that likes to explode on people. So that brings us to the next clutch, which is the Adapt clutch, which came on most of the 2022s. There's still some 2022s that were shipped with this clutch. Uh, but the tall the 2023s will come with this clutch and you can see this clutch the biggest difference on this clutch as you can see is it's not as wide it's probably an inch shorter in height and so what we're thinking is a new body style that's going to be released this week at Hades it's going to have a narrower um, body which is going to be great it'll allow us to have less body drag and less uh, side heel pressure from the body as we go through the snow when we're side healing and I think this is going to be a good clutch unfortunately People that have these older clutches that want to replace this one, the jury's still out on whether how reliable this one's going to be. Because it really didn't take us, it took a couple of model years of using this clutch before we, really, before we really find out there was a problem with it coming apart. This one, no one really knows yet. We have a year into it, not all the mountain sleds came with it last year, so you really don't know how this one is going to hold up to uh, the abuse that we put on a, a mountain sled. But very different, you can see it's got a very, this is the spider here. It's a much larger piece than the, and it went, they went back to aluminum from the steel spider over here. Uh, very different, how it uh, goes together is different. Uh, the rollers are actually pretty similar. They have a nice wide roller, um, the nice wide um, spot here where you put your weights, and I haven't put the weights in this one yet. But the weight attaches differently, we'll show you that in a minute. And these, the rollers go in, all they have is one bolt on this side and the roller pin comes out and you can actually take the roller out and replace the roller. So um, uh, one thing I'm not going to talk about in this video, um, because you'll probably really never see this clutch, the M1000 had a different clutch than the M8s. And what they did was on the M1000, and we call this the six tower clutch. You can see one, two, three, four, five, six, six towers. And it fits a three pronged spider. The M1000 actually had an eight tower clutch. So there was eight of these and the spider was shaped like a cross. It was, um, and it, so it had four primary clutch weights in it and four rollers 
The spider was shaped like a cross. I'm not going to really cover that clutch in this video. Just be aware of that if you come across an M1000 with the eight tower clutch, or we, they call it just the M1000 clutch, because it's really the only snowmobile that ever came on. It's quite a bit different than this, just because it had that different spider that had four flyweights in it. All right, the last thing we're going to do in this video, we're going to weigh all the clutches, just so you kind of know what you're dealing with as far as weight goes. You notice all these clutches, the Articat clutches anyway, I've pulled off the ring that goes on the back of them. All, pretty much all these clutches came with that. When I took these clutches off, uh, a couple of them had it, a couple of them didn't. So I thought it was only fair if we took this off all the clutches so they all had the weight, this without the same. So if you want to take this off your sled, people have been doing it for years. I'm just going to show you how much it weighs. So the ring and the six bolts, about one pound, six ounces. So not a bad weight loss of rotating weight on your primary clutch if you want to pull this off. I've, never, I've seen hundreds of people take these off, and I've really never seen anyone that's ever complained that they've ever had a problem uh, with their engine or their clutch with taking that off. So first clutch we're going to start with is the 05 to 2015 clutch. And uh, we'll get this on the scale and weigh it. You can see it weighs 11 pounds, almost 3 ounces. Um, fairly heavy clutch. So the next clutch we're going to weigh is the team. I'm only weighing one team here because really they almost weigh identical. The roller bearing on the newer clutch weighs a few ounces more, but it's really not a lot more. So this clutch weighs 11 pounds, 7, seven ounces, so almost, you can see that clutch weighs almost the same as this clutch here, the 05 to 15 clutch. Now, which is kind of amazing since it does have a steel spider, which replaced this aluminum spider. So that it weighs the same, that's kind of, kind of a nice thing. Now we're going to weigh the adapt clutch. So we got 10 pounds, 9 ounces. So almost a full pound lighter than the clutch, than any of these other Articat clutches that it can replace. So that is the Adapt clutch. So the last clutch I want to weigh, which I just want to show you just for comparison, is the Polaris, the P85 clutch. Now this is called the P85 clutch because Polaris introduced this clutch in 1985. So they've been using this clutch for almost 30 years, which is kind of remarkable when we consider five, a 30 year clutch this is 20 years worth of different clutches here for Articat. Um, if you count the clutch they did before this, there's two team clutches. So they actually had five clutches between 2000, the year 2000 and now. So five clutches in 20 years versus one clutch in 20 years. It's kind of crazy, but let's weigh this thing. So we got nine pounds, six ounces. So almost a full pound less than the Adapt clutch two pounds less than either of these two clutches that came on the earlier Articats. So, I mean, a significant weight savings uh, with the P85, the, the Polaris clutch. So, nice little clutch. There you go, all the clutches, a little bit about each one, when they started, what years they covered, um, how it goes together, comes apart, especially with the weights. Hope this will help you with your Articats in the future, if you're going to replace the clutch or if you want to take something apart, how to do that. Hope this helps you get out on the snow and stay on the snow this year. Make sure to maintain your clutches, take them apart, clean them, clean the surfaces. You can see this one's got this big black streak on it. That's because when we took this apart, it had one of the weights was worn and the roller was worn, so we had to do some repair on it. So the belt was slipping, that's why it's got that big black streak on it. And so maintain your clutches. Uh, you'll have a much better season if you maintain your clutches. Your clutches are working appropriately. And this is Rich from Mountain Slater Garage. Make sure you share, like, and subscribe to the YouTube page. See you next time. Can't, you can't resist fresh snow, can you? <laughs>